Hello, welcome to another episode of Africa This Month on Ominira TV. I am Larry Peter and this is where I bring to you selected issues of happenings across the continent. So let's start from Mozambique where the French oil company in total completed a financing agreement of over $14 billion to build Africa's largest gas project in Mozambique. This project is the biggest investment, private investment ever on the continent. And when the project is completed, it will be the channel to transport gas from Africa to Asia and other markets around the world. News like this are good to hear, no matter how you look at it, because the hope of filling infrastructural gap on the continent is through private sector driven investment like this. And that's why I think that all the government needs to do is to adopt fiscal, financial, and trade policies that will enable, that will create an enabling business environment and make doing business easy, as that is the only way to attract more investment of this kind and enhance economic growth. Now to my second story, which is about the conflict at the River Nile between Ethiopia and Egypt. In 2011, Ethiopia began the construction of the continent's largest hydroelectric dam on the River Nile, called the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. The goal of the facility for Ethiopia was to be able to create, provide power to millions of Ethiopians who currently lack a regular supply of electricity, to boost, boost its economy and to become an electricity exporter. However, after a decade, there is still no agreement between Ethiopia and Egypt on the mode of operation of the dam. As Egypt refers to, continues to refer to it as a national security threat. This project has been a cause of diplomatic tensions and threats of war between the two nations because it gives Ethiopia uh, control over the flow of the Nile waters into Egypt. And Egypt being a dry territory is concerned because it relies on River Nile for 90% of its water. After many failed trials, the African Union has finally help to strike an agreement for both countries to resume talks on this issue. Even though it's been reported as political, I hope that Ethiopia and Egypt would find, reach a peaceful agreement this time and avoid, in order to avoid unnecessary conflict as we know that words are no good for any society. Now to my third story. In July, Kenya and the United States of America formally launched negotiation talks for the bilateral trade agreements between the two countries. This would be the United States' first free trade agreement with a sub-Saharan African country and its second on the continent after the 2006 trade agreement it entered with Morocco. Before now, it is seen that the Trump administration do not prioritize trade relations with Africa until it began to pursue a trade deal with Kenya. However, it is believed that this move is a strategy to counter China's growing influence on the continent and also to create a model for bilateral deals with other, con other countries on the continent, in the continent. I know that entering a trade agreement with the United States would not only increase foreign direct investment for Kenya, but will also create more opportunities for the economy. But my concern is whether this trade agreement will not undermine the ongoing Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement, which Kenya has signed. Now to my last story, which is from South Africa, where President Ramaphosa has banned the sales and distribution of alcohol in the country. This is because of the increase in number of coronavirus cases and alcohol-related injuries which spiked after the country lifted its ban. Stakeholders in the alcohol business in the country have condemned this move, but what I want us to understand is that government decisions usually have intended and unintended consequences, which in this case is the loss of jobs for to, of hundreds of thousands of South Africans who work in the alcohol value chain. My hope is that the president or the South African government will realize that while safeguarding the public health, you must also strike a balance so that 
it does not make decisions that would ruin a particular sector that is already employing over a million people, as there has to be a balance between public health and the economy. And that's all on this episode of Africa This Month. I hope you found it interesting. Please share with your friends. Thank you. Mm -hmm.